What's up guys, it's Brad from Letter Architect here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a quick tip I learned when using the Chaos Fire Shader in shading this mini nuke explosion that we created. In playing around with the Chaos Fire Shader, I've just found a few little tricks that help to create a larger or smaller scale looking simulation just through that shading process itself. And I thought I'd just do some quick breakdowns of those tips. So today I'm going to just show how you can control the amount of flames and fire that comes through your simulation whenever your smoke is super dense. So so essentially when your smoke is super dense and contrasty that generally is the look of a larger scale looking smoke simulation which a lot of the time is the look I am going for when I'm creating some of these explosions all right so here we are inside a blender and this is a little mini nuke explosion that we created with a few chaos operators here I'll link a tutorial in the description if you want to learn how to create these kind of mini nuke explosions and uh, yes yeah, pretty much what we have here we, we used a bunch of dynamic smoke operators with the 360 ground burst and uh, just I think we have about eight different different 360 ground burst particle systems blasting out fuel here and uh, created this little result and under the smoke domain settings we have about 310 resolution divisions and I baked quite a lot of high resolution noise on top of it as well with an up res factor of 3 and then I decreased the reaction speed down to 0.18 to get that fiery smoke look that lingers in the air a little bit and uh, if we just go to the shading mode here this is where we can see our chaos fire shader and adjust the way the simulation looks in the render and if we go to rendered mode on the top panel here, you can see that I've adjusted the chaos fire shader settings to get a larger scale looking result here. And I put the smoke density, I've increased that to 500 for that thicker smoke look. Then I've also increased the smoke contrast a little bit to again to create a little bit of a thicker and more detailed smoke. And then I've also put the flames brightness at 5 and the flames contrast at 18. And in this tutorial I just want to go through some of the ways we can use the flames brightness and the flames contrast in different ways to kind of shade the fire of your simulation because a lot of the time for our large-scale smoke it works pretty well to increase the density in the smoke contrast but that takes away a lot of our flames as the flames kind of become hidden in the smoke and then when we're trying to bring back the flames it gets a little bit messy and a little confusing on which parameter we should change here so what I want to focus on is these last two parameters here assuming that you like the density of your simulation play with both the density and the contrast settings first get a density level that you like for your smoke and then move on to the flames brightness and contrast here and as you can see if we go back to solid mode here we have a lot of fire within our smoke but we've only allowed fire to come through at just a specific part of the simulation but just know that we have all this detail here that we can play around with so the way I think of this is, let's go back to rendered mode here. So the way I think of these last two parameters here is flames brightness is controlling how far all of the fire data is pushing through your mesh. And then the flames contrast is controlling how intense specific parts of the fire is coming through. So for example, if we go down to flames contrast at zero, you can see that all of a sudden we can see a rough glow around the entire image here. And then if we increase the flames brightness to something like maybe just for the sake of this example 28 we can see that now we're increasing the intensity of all the fire in the simulation and for example if we wanted this look and we wanted to make the flames a little bit brighter is we would just increase the flames contrast to something like five and now as you can see the same parts of the explosion that were flames before are just getting brighter in this specific frame of the simulation and this is not obviously a look that we want to go for so let's go ahead and dial it back a little bit but I just wanted to show this concept of using the flames brightness first to control where your flames show up and then using the flames contrast setting to change how bright those flames Flames are so a lot of the time what I like to do and we'll just go ahead and dial it back here a little bit all right, so for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to bring the flames brightness down to zero as well as the flames contrast down to zero. And I'm just going to go through the shading process for the simulation as if it were a larger scale smoke simulation where we just wanted a little hint of fire to come through the smoke near the end of the simulation here. Right now, I think considering the look of this explosion here, I think the smoke density and the smoke contrast are pretty good. We could adjust these as well and make it even thicker or maybe dial it back a little bit. But I think generally for larger scale simulations, as I 
I said before, it uh, looks pretty good when you increase the density a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the smoke density and the smoke contrast around here. And then as we did before, we're going to just slowly increase the flames brightness until we get just a touch of flames in the simulation here. And as you can see, we're already seeing a little touch of flames here, uh, but we're going to increase it a little bit more. You can see the little bit of orange there. Go ahead and boost this to maybe five. And now as you can see here, we're getting a little touch of flames just in certain parts of the simulation. All right, so at this point, I'm liking where the flames are coming through in our explosion. I might increase the brightness a little bit more, maybe to six, just for the sake of this tutorial. And now we're going to use the flames contrast to bring a little bit more intensity into our flames and carve up the smoke a little bit more with those flames. So I'll go ahead and I'll go to the flames contrast here. And first we'll try to increase this to something like 10 maybe. And actually that was just about right. As you can see here, we're just pushing the brightest parts of the flames through the smoke even more. And then we're also dialing back the less bright parts of the smoke. So you're not entirely just pushing more brightness through the flames, but you're kind of increasing the hot spots of the flames to create a much more dense looking result here. So I might just increase for the sake of this example, the contrast to something like 20 now. And now as you can see here, we're getting a much more fiery, dense looking result here. I think this is a little bit too much. I might dial this down to something like 16. And I think this is looking like a pretty nice looking large scale simulation result. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Just a little quick tip on shading your explosions inside a blender with the Chaos Fire Shader. Of course, feel free to play around with the different settings in the Chaos Fire Shader as well. There are so many different styles of simulations you can go for, so definitely experiment with it. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.